Welcome back to Fry Minis. I'm Eric, and today in our Strixhaven, a curriculum of chaos coverage, we're going to take a look at some new fiends, the Demogoths. Okay, so if you haven't already, be sure to check out our playlist. We're loading all of our Strixhaven content into one easily accessible location. And of course, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, join us over at discord.gg slash fry minis. Uh, we're, we're growing and we're, I hope, I hope we're going to hit that 3000 by the end of the year. I'm really excited. I think we're going to do it. Uh, so thanks. So let's talk about Demogoths. So these creatures are magic, the gathering creatures. These are not traditional D and D creatures. Uh, there is not a lot of lore out there that I could find. Uh, they're very sparse in the book, but we've got two stat blocks in each stat block has a little bit of information on it. Uh, so let's jump right in. Slipping through the darkest corners of the world, Demogoths are powerful fiendish creatures that feed on misery and other negative emotions. Some sages refer to Demogoths as tear lickers, owing to the fiend's tendencies to lurk near battlefields and other sites of great tragedy to consume the anguish saturating the area. Demogoths are creatures of forbidden knowledge and magic, all fueled by their consumption of anguish. They trade magical influence over the lives and minds of others to ambitious mortals in exchange for the mortal's agony. Demogoths are alien looking in the extreme. Their eyes are insectile or smooth and bulbous like gleaming jewels, and they have five arms. They typically wear long robes which drape low over their forms, and they sport a halo of horns, antlers, or floating stones or crystals. I mean, that sounds pretty intense. That is definitely, uh, <laughs> opposite of kind of the the stuff we've been getting right so this is really kind of hardcore uh versus things like the the heron gone or the owl and <laughs> but i do like a super spooky kind of weird alien looking fiend devil demon thing so i don't know but here let's take a look at the stat block at cr10 these fiends are actually huge uh with a climb speed so that's always gross uh, some really great skill proficiencies, immune to psychic and frightened, true sight of 120 feet with telepathy to match. Their actions are pretty nice, uh, plus 9 to hit, uh, it can be a 10 foot reach or 120 foot reach, uh, 2d10 force damage and regains 5 hit points, you can do 3 of those or replace one of those with terrify. Uh, one creature can see within 120 feet, dc 17 wisdom save. Or take 6d10 psychic and is frightened until the end of the Demogoth's next turn. And of course, it heals for another 5 hit points. So that's really cool. So if you watched uh, the drag, the Founder Dragon video, one of my biggest complaints with those stats blocks uh, was that those are dragons that created a school of magic. But their basic attacks, their actions were a bite, a claw, and a breath attack. And they weren't magical. And I know we're reworking all the stat blocks to only list spells that are kind of utility um, for, for spellcaster monsters. But but we didn't give those dragons. I mean, their legendary actions were a little magical, I guess. But I would expect that for any dragon. Uh, but here, this kind of spell-like effect with that uh, that attack that does damage and heals. That's exactly the kind of thing I was looking for in those dragon stat blocks. All right, but we've got one more thing on here that's kind of interesting. Pact of Pain. Using a 10-minute ritual, the Demogoth can forge a magical bond with a willing creature it touches throughout the ritual. The creature becomes bound by the pact until it dies. The Demogoth dies, or the pact is broken by any effect they can remove a curse. The Demogoth chooses one spell from the Necromancy or Enchantment School, that's third level or lower. The bound creature can cast that spell using this pact, requiring no material components and using intelligence as a spellcasting ability. When it casts the spell, the creature takes 2d6 psychic damage, which can't break the creature's concentration on the spell. Once the bound creature casts the spell in this way, they can't do so again until it finishes a long rest. So that is super cool. Uh, absolutely, we need to find some sort of warlock uh, to partner up with one of these things. Uh, the whole idea of trading pain to get a spell i mean that that's like a baby warlock on its own i think this is really really cool and a really interesting type of thing uh of course most monster staff blocks are just what you're going to fight them with 
Uh, but this is like a whole different way to interact with this creature. So, I, hats off. This is this is really, really cool. I like this one a lot. Uh, so this is the regular Demogoth, but up next is the Demogoth Titan. Demogoth Titans are powering monsters that blight the land around them. A Demogoth grows in power over the course of decades spent feeding on sorrow and draining life from nature. Eventually, that growth turns the Demogoth into a Titan. The Titans maintain their lesser cousin's ability to trade magical power for a mortal's pain, but they tend to demand more punishing suffering in exchange for their packs of knowledge. When a supplicant piques a Demogoth Titan's interest, the Titan can grant a blessing to the supplicant. See supernatural gifts in the DMG. As long as the creature has the blessing, it must expend and roll two of its hit dice whenever it finishes a long rest. It takes psychic damage equal to the total rolled, and its hit point maximum is reduced by an amount equal to the psychic damage taken. This reduction lasts until the creature finishes its next long rest. The creature dies if this effect reduces its hit point maximum to zero. The blessing can be removed only by a wish spell. This gets even better. That's so cool. So some of the blessings uh, from the DMG that you can get from this, theoretically, are super strong. Plus two wisdom or constitution, plus one bonus to AC and saving throws, advantage on saves against spells and magical effects, uh, a horn of Valhalla, you can turn non-magical weapons into a plus one weapon, uh, things that count as magic items, and blessings you can kind of, you can make your own with these. So your dungeon master is not limited to what's listed there. This is extraordinarily cool. I would absolutely use this to give players a choice of permanent pain and weirdness to get some, some really, really good stuff. Demogoth Titans are gargantuan fiends. They've lost their climb speed because I don't know what they're climbing on when they're that big, I guess. CR 16, but look at those saving throws, those skills. We still have our true sight and telepathy for 120 feet. We've now got three legendary resistances. We have that same pact of the suffering, which is fine. Uh, our agonizing burst has actually decreased. Uh, we used to be able to make three, but now we can only make two. But I see we're getting legendary action, so I, th I think that probably averages out to still be ahead. But that Agonizing Blast is now 3d6 plus 7. And we could just straight up teleport 120 feet. That's wild. So, okay, let's look at these legendary actions. We've got three of them. Uh, attack, make an attack or Agonizing Bolt. Okay, so yeah, we're definitely going to come out ahead on those Agonizing Burst. Oh, actually, uh, now that I say that, look at that. Uh, Agonizing Bolt is what's listed in the legendary action, but the actual ability is called Agonizing Burst. Yeah, I don't actually see anything. Even the old, the regular Demogoth is called Agonizing Burst. Clearly just a typo. Stalking Nightmare costs two legendary actions, uses teleport, and then it targets one creature. Target makes a con save, DC 20, or it takes 4d10 necrotic, and then the Titan regains 10 hit points. That's pretty fun. Okay, terrorize at three actions. Titan targets one creature, can see within 120 feet. DC 20 wisdom save. A fail takes seven D10 psychic and is frightened until the end of the target's next turn. And the Titan regains 15 hit points. Yeah, that's a cool stat block. CR 16, so it's not as powerful as like the Founder Dragons, which is totally fine. But this is way more, to me at least, this is way more exciting than those Founder Dragon stat blocks. Those were, they weren't awful. They were just so kind of bland. And the fact that so many of them had uh, like duplicative abilities uh, really, I think makes these fiends stand out as a really strong uh, stat block. And I'm really excited because I'm assuming uh, WizKids will make minis for these. I'm really excited to see what these look like in mini form because there are a couple different pictures throughout the book and they vary significantly so i i look forward to it all right that is, there's your demogoth lore that's really about all i could find i even looked online at like some wikis and the best i could find was like yeah these are demons from this world where Cirque is arcadios and they kind of make deals with people <laughs> so i guess this book kind of kind of reinforced that i don't know let me know what you think. Would you use these in your game? Would you let your players make a deal with them? 
would you let maybe NPCs make deals with them? I would. All right. Thank you. Like and subscribe. We'll see you in the next one.